Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round two of our league challenge that happened at Die Hard Games on October 24th, 2024. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central, featuring casual and tournament play of whatever format everyone wants. Surging Sparks pre-releases start Saturday, October 26th at 1 p.m. Go see more dates in this video's description and League Cup. Saturday, November 23rd at 11 a.m. All Central Time, all at Die Hard Games. And check out Pokemon's Event Locator for premiere and other events at the shop, such as League Challenges, League Cups, pre-releases, and more. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good free stuff, but anyways, let's research this, this game. With, on the left we have Palkia, Dusnor. On the right we have Roaring Moon. If you couldn't guess. Our Palkia player on the left is going first. Skull in the active spot. Nest Ball is the first card to be played. That item card allows the player to search their deck for a basic Pokemon to put onto the bench. Probably going to get that Origin Form Palkia V as it's the main attacker for your deck here. Get that established on the board. And yep, you, you can play Trekking Shoes or Earthen Vessel. Looks like Earthen Vessel is getting played and actually discarding a rare candy from hand in order to search the deck for up to two basic energy. Double water, of course, will be found here. That's the only type this deck plays. Uh, there is the trekking shoes if they want to go a little bit further into the deck this turn. Otherwise they can attach an energy somewhere. Um, probably on the Palkia would be best, as we see it happen there. Trekking Shoes is the last card to be played. No need to go further into the deck right now. That player seems to think as they pass things over to our Roaring Moon player on the right hand side of the screen. And they start their turn off with the Nest Ball as well. Remember this card lets you search your deck for a basic Pokemon to put onto your bench probably Roaring Moon will be the target here. But since it, this is the first time the player gets to look at their deck, they're going to take a second to do a prize check, see what might be in the deck and what might be in those face down prize cards here. And they select Radiant Greninja as the Pokemon off of this Pokeball. Nest Ball, excuse me. And that goes onto the bench allowing our darkness player on the right hand side to continue to draw more cards with Radiant Greninja's ability. Concealed cards. Discard a energy card, draw two more cards. So there we go, Greninja's concealed cards. To draw a couple more cards and that Roaring Moon EX is found and put onto the bench there. Now, does this hand contain Professor Sada's? No, but it has a Dark Patch, at least, that accelerates a Darkness Energy onto a Bench Darkness Pokemon from the discard pile. Pokemon Catcher is the item card played next. Blank card there, since Tails was flipped. Trekking Shoes gets played now. Look at the top deck. You can keep it or discard it. And it looks like it was discarded in order to draw one more card. And now Squawkabilly, Squawk and Seize is used. You can only use it on your first turn when you do discard your hand and draw six fresh new cards. Darkness in the discard is good as another Dark Patch is found to accelerate another Darkness Energy from the discard pile to that Bench Roaring Moon EX. That Golden Dark Patch. Nest Ball is being played now. Double Nest Ball. A regular and a Golden to find two more basic Pokemon from the deck and put them on the bench. Maybe a backup Roaring Moon and a Mew. Oh, it looks like the Pheasantipity is going to be eyed up and put down there. You can suspect that the aggressive Palkia deck across from you is going to start taking prize cards there next turn so you can find the Pheasantipity EX with the Flip the Script ability. If the opponent takes a KO on their turn, 
you can use flip the script on that Fezendipity EX to draw three more cards from the deck. Now I don't think there was an energy attachment from hand yet, so that Mew EX will get put onto the bench there. Checking the discard pile, there is darkness energy in there. No supporter card played yet, right? So Professor Sada's Vitality is an option, but no, just Pow Pad and Darkness Energy in hand. So I guess you attach the Squawkabilly and you can um, motivate, but no, gonna attach the Bench, Roaring Moon, and then use, wow, Muse Reset ability to draw up to three cards in hand, and that Prime Catcher was found on off of that well-trained Mew there. That pink Ace Bet card item lets you pick an opponent's bench Pokemon and move it into the active spot, and then you move one of your bench Pokemon into the active spot. Come here, Palkia V. Roaring Moon moves up into the active spot, and the Pokey Stop is put down. It's going to be used. You discard three cards, and then if any of those are items, you put them in your hand. A couple items found there, but so far their players having everything they need this turn. Trekking shoes, draw a card, discard that Roaring Moon, keep the next card. And I think Roaring Moon's going to use Calamity Storm there. It's attack Calamity Storm is discard a stadium in if or it does 100 damage base, and if you discard a stadium in play, it'll do 220 total perfect numbers to KO that Palkia V for the first two prize cards of the game. Duskall floats into the active spot and play resumes on its side. There is a Night Stretcher to recover the Palkia V from the discard pile and an Iono, so there's some stuff our player can do to hopefully get back into this game. They're just going to play the Iono, not playing that Rescue, or the Night Stretcher. Both players shuffle their hands with Iono, put it at the bottom of their deck, and then draw cards from the top equal to their remaining prize cards. Four for the Roaring Moon player, six for the Palkia player, so kind of disruption happening here. Let's see if more basics can be found. It looks like there's a few. Duskull hits the bench. There's a Rotom, and you can probably put that... Uh, no, you probably hold the Blood Moon or Saluna for now. Ultra Ball being debated on being played here. Ultra Ball has you discard two cards in order to search your deck for a Pokemon. Maybe the player would want to find the Palkia V, but they had it with that uh, Night Stretcher earlier, just valuing preserving that card there, the Night Stretcher, I guess. Putting it at the bottom and saving it for later. I don't think you put down the Blood Moon here. You probably save it. Don't put another two prize liability in. That's not a Palkia, at least. So Ultra Ball finally going to be played, discarding water and rare candy, sadly, for a Mew. Okay. Looking to do some restarting of their selves. Mew with that restart ability. Once per turn, you can draw up to three cards in hand. So if you have a low hand size, Mew can bail you out sometimes. You might as well put down the Rotom at this point. So you can draw more with Mew, and if you don't get anything off of Mew, you can restart. Mew's restart, drawing two cards. <laughs> okay, that Nest Ball. Uh, more support Pokemon in that Pheasantipity, but the Nest Ball is found to let the player search for basic Pokemon to put onto the bench with that League Stamp Nest Ball there. Let's see what they value here. Uh, a a Froakie could be a good option, but there's already two rare candy down in the discard pile. You wanted those rare candies for the Dust Skull, I mean, excuse me, the Dust Snore. So they're actually just going to go for the Dust Skull. Maybe there is no other Palkia V in deck, or any other better basic right now, the player thinks. They shuffle things up and get ready for this end of the turn here. Rotom has the Insta Charge ability. You can draw three cards and then your turn ends. So I think that's all we've got here. Pheasantipity is put down. No, I forgot. Pheasantipity flip the script is live. Benched and flip the script is used to draw three cards. Since there was a KO last turn, there is a rare candy found. 
That allows that Dust Skull to evolve directly into Dust Snore with that Curse Blast ability. If you knock it out, you can place thir 13 damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's enough to KO that Greninja there with 130 HP. Of course, the opponent takes a prize card since one of your Pokemon were knocked out but it could be good to keep up in the prize race and control your opponent's board a little bit more as Rotom V uses its Insta Charge ability to draw three cards and end the turn. Play resumes over on the right on this Roaring Moon side. All they want to do at this point is just build more Roaring Moon. Really knock out a, a two prizer if they can on the opponent's side. Ultra Ball discards Nest Ball and Darkness Energy. Not bad to search the deck for a Pokemon. Basic or Evolution. Nothing being found here, so potentially just getting the Darkness in the discard pile and thinning the hand down to draw to be able to draw with Muse Restart. There was a KO on the opponent's last turn, so flip the script is live that Petron EX put onto the board with its powerful mobility ability. Energy attached to the bench Roaring Moon and Mew uses Restart to draw up to three into the hand. Dark Patch found accelerates an energy from the discard pile to the bench Roaring Moon. And now that Professor Sada's Vitality is played. Pick two of your ancient Pokemon in play, accelerate an energy, basic energy from the discard pile to each of them. Just one in the discard and one goes on to the bench Roaring Moon, fully powering it up. Plus Professor Saddles lets, lets you draw three cards after that. So things are looking very dangerous on Roaring Moon side here as Pokestops put into play and is being used. Discard the top three cards of the deck, keep any item cards you discarded in that way. A couple hits. Good. Judge, you don't mind going to discard piles. Pokemon Catcher is played here. Flip a coin. It's probably Tails there. If it was Heads, it acts like a boss's orders or a gust effect. Bring up a Pokemon from your opponent's bench into the active spot. But that was Tails, so nothing there. Now Petra, or excuse me, um, Pheasantipodes, flip the script, draw three cards. Love the ability to use markers there. Since the supporter was already played, no boss's orders can be played, so the Roaring Moon just takes the KO on the opposing Dust Skull with its second attack. I can't remember the name right this second, but it does 100 damage at least, leaving that Pokestop in play. The Calamity Storm attack. Mew's in the active spot on the left hand side here, and then Pheasantipity EX uses Flip the Script to draw three cards since there was a KO taken. Mew's got free retreat in that active spot there as a nest or excuse me night stretcher is played to bring back from the discard pile into the player's hand a Pokemon or a basic energy. It's gonna be that Palkia V now coming back into play. That gets put onto the bench. Irida in hand, so we could have found the Palkia V star if there was one on the board last turn. A Pokemon can't evolve unless it's been on in play for at least one turn. So the Irida will be played. That supporter lets the player search their de deck for an item and a water Pokemon. Palkia V stars there. And there's tons of items, I know, in this deck. So what's the best one? We're going to go for the Palkia V star for sure. Uh, Greninja's gone, so getting water energy can't get you more cards with something like Earthen Vessel. So the last rare candy, I think, is grabbed. I think that was the fourth one. There's the item. Water Pokemon Palkia V-Star for next turn. Now, uh, it's hard to stall your, your opponent too here with the Prime Catcher, for example, because of Petron EX. Night Stretcher being played, another one to bring back a Dust Snore. Okay, we do have the Rare Candy Dust Snore. That allows that basic to skip the middle evolution and evolve straight to the Stage 2, as long as it can evolve. Uh -huh, and it's time for Blood Moon, or Saluna, that comes down. That can attack for one energy now. 
Pokey Stop is played, discarding the top three cards. Very good. Two items. They go to hand off of that Pokey Stop. Water energy in the discard pile. Not bad. Palkia V-Star can bring that back. Another Night Stretcher can too. <laughs> That goes back to hand the water energy off of the Night Stretcher. Mew free retreats into the Blood Moon Ursula EX with that Season Skill ability. Reduces its attack cost with the more prize cards the opponent's taken. So there's the manual attachment to the Blood Moon Ursula. It attacks for one energy now with its Blood Moon attack. 240 damage. And it can't use that attack the next turn. They are preserving the um, Dusnor, but I think I just missed they, our player on the right just kind of showed ga they had game in hand. Let's see hit that again here as we go back in time. Blood Moon KO is the active, but then there's boss's orders in hand, it looks like. And the, so the active Roaring Moon, what again, there's so many moons in play right now, uh, that'll get knocked out by the Blood Moon. But then all that has to happen is the benched Roaring Moon comes into the active spot. And actually, yeah, just KOs the active. Never mind, boss's orders didn't even, even need to be in hand. Our Roaring Moon player on the right had that board ready to go to take down round two. What do you think of this video and the commentary? Please leave feedback in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab.